Welcome everyone to JetPatch June Patch Tuesday Overview. This webinar is to discuss the latest Patch Tuesday release from Microsoft, along with some important vulnerabilities from different vendors, such as Red Hat, SUSE, and many more. In this session, we'll cover the recent Patch Tuesday highlights and how JetPatch can help you fix them. I'm Ol Smolnik, Product Manager in JetPatch, and I've invited Gilly uh, to discuss about some of JetPatch features. Hey, Gilly, how are you? Hey, Or, thank you. I'm great. Very happy to be here. I'm also happy to have you here with us. Uh, so what do you think about this uh, month Patch Tuesday? So uh, for this June, Microsoft released uh, 50 CVEs for the different Microsoft product, products. And it's very uh, interesting uh, to see uh, what's, what it's going to be about. And in general, uh, in the past three months, there has been a decrease in the number of vulnerabilities uh, that they're releasing the CVEs for. So let's see what we're gonna have. Okay, so let's start. We will first have highlights of uh, this patch Tuesday. Uh, uh, next, we will cover three of the main vulnerabilities uh, that Microsoft uh, fixed this month. Uh, we will see how uh, Jetpatch can help you to, uh, uh, to patch this Patch Tuesday. And last thing, uh, uh, we will cover some of uh, Jetpatch uh, products uh, and see how they can also help you in your uh, remediation process. The first uh, thing to understand is that we have uh, 50 unique CVEs. We have five uh, CVEs, five vulnerabilities in critical vulnerability with an average score of 7.32. And we have 45 important vulnerabilities with an average score of 7.15. Uh, also, uh, a good thing to, to, to notice is that there is no moderate uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, I know that last uh, uh, month we almost, uh, I think we had one moderate vulnerabilities and right now we don't have any of them. Uh, also, it's important to understand that six vulnerabilities from this list uh, are actively used in, in, in attack right now. And three of them are public in, publicly known, so people can take those vulnerabilities and uh, uh, exploit uh, uh, environments using those vulnerabilities. Sounds like uh, our customers need to patch uh, right away if six of them are already exploited. Correct, definitely uh, right thing to do, to patch it right after the Patch Tuesday uh, release and when you have this patch in your repositories. Right. Also, we can, we can see that we have uh, different affected products, uh, of course, that all the Windows desktops and Windows servers versions are part of them. Uh, we, also some, uh, we also have some vulnerabilities for uh, the Office suits, and even we have something for uh, Paint 3D, if you are using that, uh, and uh, the Windows Defender. Uh, we can see that uh, most of the vulnerabilities are uh, related to remote code execution, which also some of them related to uh, our high privileges. Uh, and it's important to know that those are very critical uh, uh, attacks that can happen to your environment. So like we said before, it's very important to patch your environment. The first vulnerability that we will cover is about uh, Kerberos authentication. It is rated as, uh, uh, it, the severity is important with 9.4 uh, uh, score. Uh, this is actually the highest CVE in this patch Tuesday, although it is important and not critical. Um, to understand it better, uh, Kerberos is a computer network security protocol that authenticates uh, a service request between two or more trusted hosts across an untrusted network, such as the internet. Uh, and uh, it uses uh, secret key cryptography and a trusted third party for authenticating client server applications and verifying users' identifications. Using this vulnerability, uh, an attacker can uh, uh, bypass the authentication and actually have high privileges in uh, uh, your environment. Uh, if you have, of course, that uh, the, the affected uh, uh, environment is all the Windows servers and desktops, and it is part of the monthly security update that Microsoft releases. The second vulnerability is uh, about Hyper-V. Uh, uh, we also see, saw uh, a major vulnerability last in, in, in the previous month. So this is another one uh, that Microsoft uh, uh, fixed. This is also an important uh, vulnerability with a score of 8.6. Um, 
like the previous one, it is all about denial of service. Uh, uh, and actually the attacker can send a spatial crafted message uh, from the network that will cause uh, a reference count to be leaked. And eventually it can cause the Hyper-V to crash and you will need to be, and we will need to restart the uh, Hyper-V infrastructure. All organizations with Hyper-V infrastructure are uh, uh, exposed to this vulnerability. And this is also a part of the monthly security update. Last but not least, we will cover the highest critical uh, uh, vulnerability in Patch Tuesday. Uh, we have uh, a critical vulnerability with 7.8 score. Uh, it is about the Windows Defender and uh, especially about the Microsoft Wal Malware Protection Engine. Uh, and a, 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 an attacker can uh, have a remote code execution based on the Microsoft Defender. Uh, so if you have a Microsoft Defender in your environment, which is also enabled, uh, uh, then it is very important to update uh, uh, the Microsoft uh, Malware Protection Engine to the latest version. Uh, it's important to note that uh, the Windows Defender is automatically updating uh, the Microsoft Malware Protection Engine. So all you need to, uh, so if you have an internet connectivity, it is very uh, important to make sure it got the, the right update. And if not, you need to uh, update it manually uh, using WSUS, or uh, you can also, of course, run a manual uh, uh, binary on the environment to patch uh, the, the Microsoft Defender and have the latest version of the engine uh, which fix the, the problem. So how can we help you uh, with this uh, month patch Tuesday? Of course, that besides of uh, do the patch for you using our capabilities, we can also make sure and verify that the Microsoft OneWare protection engine is uh, running in the latest version using our one task capabilities that we will cover in a few. So let's review some of JetPatch features. So now, uh, after we understand uh, some of the important and critical vulnerabilities in Patch Tuesday, let's, in, let's review some of JetPatch features and see how they can help you to patch uh, your environment. We will start covering the run tasks capability. It allows you to run tasks in all of your environment. And we will end with the emergency maintenance window. Uh, uh, and we will see how can you uh, uh, reply to zero day vulnerabilities uh, uh, as soon as possible without do any major changes in your environment. So Gilly, can you please elaborate about what it is the run task capability? Sure, um, absolutely. So the run task is basically uh, the ability to run tasks on your entire uh, environment, whether it's script or just a command that you'd like to run on all of your endpoints. Um, basically, a task is a script wrapper, uh, and we support many different uh, scripting languages, uh, including Bash, PowerShell, Python, Awk, uh, CMD, and more. And uh, what's very interesting here is that a task can be based on scripts that uh, customers uh, uh, already use, and they can upload to Jetpatch and leverage that. And we also offer a very wide uh, library of built-in tasks that you can use, such as uh, Reboot, Advanced Reboot, um, and uh, services uh, to start and stop them, and many more uh, interesting things that you can use. And I understand that this is very important capability that our customers uh, really like. Uh, so do you know to, to, tell, uh, to tell us why? Yes, absolutely. So basically, as a pre-sales engineer, uh, we find that many of our prospects see this as a very valuable feature uh, because they have the ability to run the tasks on the entire environment and not only, but to schedule a specific time for running these tasks uh, is a very powerful thing to do. Uh, they generate reports uh, and perform analysis based on the output of each and every task. And um, they really love it. It's a simple way to run your tasks, but the visibility uh, you gain from it is, uh, is great. And how can you use it uh, for uh, patch operations? So we leverage those tasks uh, for pre and post tasks that you, you need. So if you want to back up your servers before 
uh, actually patching them or maybe start and stop services before and after or just simply reboot your endpoints after you patch them, you can uh, use our task uh, functionality to do so. As part of our workflow capability, right? Yes, yes, it's part of our workflow, which is an automatic way to run all the tasks you need before uh, the patching and after. So Gilly, can you please show us how we are uh, uh, using the run task capability in Jetpatch? Definitely. Uh, let's show them the UI. Um, okay, so as you can see here, this is our endpoints management tab. You can see here the entire environment, all the endpoints from the different operating systems uh, that you have. And by simply choosing and filtering the list of endpoints you'd like to run the task on, you just uh, check them, select the action, and click on Run Task. By that, as you see, an interactive window is opened, and you can basically select uh, the task that you'd like to run. And you can also, uh, as I mentioned before, run the task on a specific date and time. So if you check that checkbox, um, you can just select when would you like that to run, and Jetpatch will automatically know uh, when to execute it. And how will you use this feature in the current patch use day? So this is a really great question. I think you mentioned it before regarding the Windows Defender CVE uh, that uh, Microsoft has released for the malware protect uh, protection engine. Mm -hmm. um, the run task capability would be a really great way to leverage that. As you said, uh, we don't need to do any active action of patching for this CVE. But what we actually need to do is to perform some tests to see that the version was updated. So I highly recommend using our run task functionality to just uh, execute a command that checks what's the version. And by uh, generating a report with the output of all the tasks we've run, we can see what's the protection engine version. And if some of them are not yet updated, we will know exactly which endpoints needs to be fixed. Really quick way to validate and make sure all the engine is up to date and everything is on place yeah. and my environment is not vulnerable. Exactly, so uh, instead of uh, running manually uh, a command on each and every endpoint in your environment, uh, you only need to add this command to Jetpatch, execute it in two clicks on your entire environment and see the output by generating a report. So it's very, very quick and very simple. Nice. Yeah. So the next feature that we will cover is about the emergency remediation plan. But before we can talk about that, let's talk about a regular remediation plan and a regular maintenance window. So in Jetpatch, we are attaching a maintenance window to each and every endpoint in your environment and not in the group level. So for example, you can have, you can have one group with four different endpoints inside, and each one of them will be patched in a different time. So for example, the first server will be patched between midnight to 2 a.m. The second uh, uh, endpoint will be patched two hours after that. And by that, you can have the same actions and the same patches on the same group, on one group, but the execution time will be different between the endpoint that needs to have this fix. Now that we understand what it is a regular remediation plan and how the maintenance window works in Jetpatch, we can talk about emergency remediation plan and how to leverage a spatial maintenance window for a spatial and emergency remediation plan. Gilly, can you please uh, help us understand? So yes, I'd love to explain, but right before that, I want to remind you guys that there are already six zero days vulnerability that are being actively exploited in the wild. And this is the exact reason we came up with the emergency remediation plan feature. And now I'll be happy to explain what is it all about. So basically uh, an emergency remediation plan is the ability to patch uh, in a non-planned maintenance window, uh, which is usually before um, the time that you'd usually patch your, your endpoints in your environment, uh, whether it's uh, patch it now, patch it today, patch it this night, it's a different window than your standard window. 
Uh, what are the benefits of actually using this feature? So exactly when uh, you have these zero days vulnerabilities that you need to fix ASAP, um, this is when it's actually very, very helpful. And you don't really need to change the entire setup of your environment. You simply need to check uh, the remediation plan emergency checkbox. And that would simply uh, uh, allow you to, to select the new maintenance window for the group that you'd like to patch. So it's very good for organizations that, uh, for example, are patching based on the quarterly cycles. Uh, so if right after the quarterly patch uh, cycle, uh, uh, there is a new zero day vulnerability that they need to fix because it is critical to the business, then they can use this emergency remediation plan without the need to change all the setup of the environment uh, and to apply the zero day fix to make sure uh, uh, the environment is uh, not in risk and secured uh, uh, as soon as the zero day came out. Exactly. Let's see an example of that on how it looks like. Okay, so uh, as I said, it's very, very simple to set up. Uh, in my screen, you can now see uh, the remediation plan that we configure. And on the bottom of the page, you see the small orange checkbox, which allows you to uh, set it as an emergency remediation plan, which as we said, will be executed in a different maintenance uh, schedule than your, the usual one. Let's go to the cycle and see how it actually looks like. So to my left, you see the emergency maintenance uh, tab and you can basically select the different uh, schedule than the regular one. Um, this would be uh, for my test group a day after patch Tuesday. And then I'll be uh, simply patching the zero day vulnerabilities if there are any a day after. Okay, thanks Gilly for your explanation. I'm sure that uh, who is watching us got very good insights with that and what is JetPatch can do. And of course, what is the current Patch Tuesday uh, that Microsoft just released. Uh, thanks, thanks for having you with us and see you next month right after Microsoft July 2021 Patch Tuesday. Take care, bye-bye. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.